Hello, hello, welcome back to Press Start by uh, Good Institute Jakarta, Indonesia Game Association, and the Lazy Monday. In this episode, as usual, uh, back with me, Ada Marisa Smita, and I have my friends over here. Hi, <laughs> meet you again. Hi, Kiki, how are you, Kiki? Uh, I'm great, I'm great. It's, it's always nice to come back to this podcast. <laughs> Yes, and it's nice to have you too. So um, for today, um, what are we going to talk about, Kate? Mm, mobile games, right? We're going to talk about mobile games, which is very interesting because um, I think it's a topic that is very interesting to dig deep. Even though, mm -hmm. because even though it's it's a very big industry, um, I think a lot of gamers, I think especially me as a mm -hmm. someone that works in a gaming media. Uh, has still a lot to learn about the industry itself. So I'm, I'm excited for this podcast today. Yes, and we have someone special today to help us learn more about the game industry, especially in the mobile landscape. We have Marcus Foon from Google. Hello, Marcus. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Adam. Hello, Kiki. How are Hello. you? Hello. Thanks great, for great. coming to our, our podcast, Marcus. No problem. All right. Be before we start, yeah. uh, maybe we can start by um, introducing yourself, Marcus. Just a quick intro to the our listener. Okay. Uh, my name is Marcus. I'm the global program manager for indie games uh, related programs at Google. I'm based in Singapore. Um, so we... Um, we run programs like Indie Games Accelerator uh, that some of you might heard of. Uh, we have programs like Demo Day, uh, Indie Games Funding, uh, also Indie Games Groups, which is a community program. And you know, hopefully, we will be able to you know run more uh, initiatives in the future to help like small game studios as well. Awesome, thank you. So, uh, Marcus, I know we are going to cover a lot of cool programs that you lead, like. Um, mm -hmm. Indie game accelerator, indie game groups, and all the things that's very very cool. But I'm sure a lot of people that already uh, know you wants to learn more about uh, your journey, your career. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Like, uh, how do you started uh, your career and ends up uh, in Google? Yeah, uh, that's a very interesting <laughs> question to answer. <laughs> um, so uh, I. I graduated as a designer, so I studied multimedia design uh, in Malaysia, uh, multimedia university, and, and majoring in digital media. So my hope was to, you know, start my own business and, you know, uh, like a digital agency to help businesses go online, right? And I am uh, always uh, passionate about tech stuff. Um, you know, I'm also a gamer myself. So, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always interested in those kind of things. So I, I thought like, you know, majoring in digital media is, is kind of like a cool thing. So, so I did, right. I graduated and then I, I went on and kick off my, uh, digital media agency, um, doing kind of like end to end solutions for our clients. And along the way though, I realized that uh, it's not easy to become an entrepreneur, uh, especially uh, I'm not a very, you know, uh, extroverted person. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if you can tell, but uh, I, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm not that, you know, uh, uh, extroverted person per se. So I need to learn how to talk to people and, and this and that. And by chance, uh, I met someone who brought me into like this um, business professional organization and, and talk about how to how to train ourselves, how to you know carry ourselves as, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, as a founder. And I think through those years, I've learned how to socialize, how to help people. And one of the motto in that business organization is kind of interesting, where by uh, before you before you actually uh, expect to receive something in return, you have to give first, right? So I think I like that. It. Yeah, so that I think that motto sits uh, really well with me, uh, even until today. And and I like the idea of being able to provide help 
help others to become successful before even thinking about like, you know, what can I gain in return? Even, you know, when we are running business and, you know, as an entrepreneur. And that actually helped me grow my business uh, further and, you know, uh, broaden my network as well while I was doing it. And, you know, the more I do it, the more I fell in love with the idea of building communities and doing more for the, you know, uh, building the ecosystem and, and stuff like that. So um, a few years later, I got in touch with Google in an event and, um, and the speaker on the stage was, she was uh, looking for someone to help this, build this uh, business community. And then she's looking for volunteer. So I, I kind of, you know, volunteer myself and said, hey, you know, I, I've been doing all this stuff. And why, what, what if I do it for, with Google? And, you know, she was looking at me and then she talked to me a little bit about like, you know, what they were expecting and, you know, what, what is this all about? Um, so it's a mix of, you know, um, technology and, and bringing businesses online. And it's, you know, right in my alley of, you know, what I've been doing. So I joined um, and then, you know, tried to build like the biggest uh, entrepreneur uh, uh, network. Uh, in the Malaysia. So in a few years, we actually managed to do that. I think at the peak, we have like 10,000 uh, entrepreneurs, you know, in our network, I think in just like maybe three years or so. So that kind of opened a lot of doors. So, you know, after that, I was also invited to be uh, a trainer to talk about design thinking and whatnot um, for, for Google. So one thing led to the other. I think uh, soon after that, an opportunity kind of opens up uh, that requires somebody who is based in Singapore to come and kind of manage the the community program. Um, so that's the opportunity where I thought like, okay, do I want to, you know, still run my business or do I want to do this new cool thing that I am like, you know, super passionate about. So I, I, I kind of, you know, pass over my business to my friends who's still running it at that time. And then I, I just jump on this ship. So that was, like, I never looked back, you know, since then. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, Marcus, um, a lot of people, uh, especially in Indonesia, wondering uh, what what it uh, feels like working at Google. What mm. are the most like fun thing or like the coolest thing that you um, feel like at working at Google? Yeah, I <laughs> I remember the feeling when I first joined. Uh, even if it has been like almost like eight years now, it's actually eight years and yeah, two weeks actually. So I still remember the first six months. Uh, I felt very intimidated. I felt like uh, yeah, I, I have this like massive imposter syndrome every day. Oh, really? And yeah, massive <laughs> imposter syndrome sometimes i do feel it too again like you know even until today it is because one of the awesome awesome thing about google is the people itself right the mm. amount of you know talented really smart people from all over the world you know in one place and they are all uh very helpful so you know it, it doesn't matter you know, who you are it, you can just reach out and say hey you know i have a question about the things that you do can i learn from you um, so it's almost always a yes, right? Uh -huh. So, so they'll say, yes, you know, we can talk and, you know, I'm, I'm willing to share. And I, I, I love that two bits. Um, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a common thing to see in, you know, uh, working, working space where everybody's like so willing to share, so open to talk about things. And I think that's like the, one of the most, um, enjoyable things to me, um, you know, as, as part of the. Google culture. So uh, the second thing is, I think it's um, it's a huge network itself. Um, so you know, not just the people that are smart and all that kind of stuff, but it's also like a really huge uh, professional network uh, internally. You can uh, you can try to you know try, try to understand everybody's background, and you know everybody has like very interesting story to tell. So you wouldn't know like who's like a I don't know, like a professional sports person and then turn into like a corporate worker or, uh, you know, they also play games. You know, we talk about games all the time and everybody's like, oh, you know, I also play this game and, you know, and and, and just kind of talk about like how to beat the boss and, and things like that, which is kind of pretty cool. So, so yeah, th those are the things that I, I find really interesting. 
Oh, yeah, nice. sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to, I, I'm kind of curious because I was reading, um, like you were mentioning a lot about learning, networking through other people, right? Mm-hmm. And I think it's it's a very valuable opportunity and asset, especially for um, small game developers. Because um, I, I heard a lot from Adam as well that um, the best thing that, you know, a small developer uh, can have mm-hmm. is a huge network that can help them and like mm-hmm. support them, give them tips and stuff like that. Um, so how can you actually make this work to your program? Like how do you usually mm-hmm. approach those game developers to, you know, hey, like join this mentorship, like meet these people? Because like, um, is there any like skepticism or like, is there any like, you know, those kind of thoughts and feelings that this um, like game developers has for, for the program? Yeah, I think um, I think you're right on point. Skepticism is is definitely a thing, like especially for small game devs, um, because you know I, I walked through the the journey myself. Like I was, you know, I was trying to run a business, and even though it was, it's not a game development studio, but you know the the feeling of becoming an entrepreneur, you 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 have to think about like gazillion things every day. Do you want to focus on this? Do I spend time on that? And and you know often so much so that you forgot about like you know what's the important thing uh so you know skepticism is definitely one thing like when people approach you and say hey you know i want to help you the first question that came into my mind uh, in, into my mind back then is that like like what did what do you want from me like what do you, <laughs> what, that's so you true know, what, <laughs> what will you get out of it right so so it's, mm-hmm. it's pretty common i i when i was doing the volunteer work like building communities i got so many questions from you know which is the same question so many people ask me the same question say why do you do this like you know this is a volunteer thing like you're wasting your time like what are you doing like what do you what do you want to get out of it so so skepticism is everywhere it's it's common right so the small studios don't understand why we do it so i think the first thing is to try to understand them in their shoes and you know try to connect uh with the um, uh mental state and and try to understand what do they fear about right so if they are if they if they are worried that you know we will come and you know take their ips away or like you know copy their ideas and things like that we have to then address those things so in our programs is is pretty straightforward um we don't take equity right and then you know all like everything is is uh if it it need be uh it will be paid for um so they don't they don't need to do anything basically they just show up you know bring the best work and then we'll just help them as, as the best we can so, so those are the kind of like the, 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 the criteria that we put forward, you know, for our programs and when people, you know, read it and then probably the first edition is not so popular because, you know, people probably don't know what we're trying to do, but the second edition and onwards, um, people can understand and they, they saw what we did. And I think that kind of, you know, kind of built up the, the momentum and also reputation as well. Is the program that you mentioned is the Indie Game Accelerator? Hmm. We started in uh, 2018. Uh, Indie Games of Uh is not a name that people kind of relate to. So we, we do spend a lot of time trying to build that name and also tell people what the, what the program is all about and, you know, how does it work and things like that. So I remember, um, you know, doing a lot of promotion back then. And uh, the first uh, I, uh, IGA, it's mm. uh, offline event, right? I mean, like it's regional based, if I'm not mistaken, like from the Asia. And can you uh, please share a little bit about the program? Um, uh, how does it work uh, mm. before and now? Yeah. Um, so uh, pre-pandemic, you know, let's just call mm. it that. Uh, so it's it's uh, everything is like in person. So we we run the SLR program. I think uh, three months. So we. We meet them twice in person. So the first, uh, after they've got into the program, the first week that we we spend with them in, uh, sorry, the first week of the program, we spend in, uh, with them in person. So we we get them into Singapore, and then also all the mentors that's supposed to help them and and supposed to work with them, uh, they're all in Singapore. <clears throat> so during that one week, uh, not just the talks, the presentation, or uh, you know, workshops or training or whatever. Uh, they also get to spend time with the people, not just with the peers, but also with the mentors. 
over lunch, over dinner, coffee, you know, even, you know, after they got back to hotel, they all stay in the same place, you know, they can just go by the pool and just talk about, you know, nonstop about games, right, or problems that they have. Uh, so that, uh, that's the first week. And then uh, we kind of send everybody back and then come back again uh, during the last week of the program, which is kind of like a graduation. So that was the, uh, the pre-pandemic uh, format. And then now, uh, after the pandemic happens, we, we try, try to readjust the, uh, the format a little bit because one thing is that, you know, there were a lot of travel restriction and, and two is that we want everybody to feel included in the, in the program. So it was virtual for, you know, majority of the time. Last year, we tried hybrid. So uh, a big portion of the program still uh, still virtual, uh, but the last portion of the, the program is actually in person. So we actually have everybody here in Singapore. And then, you know, we, we meet them in person, although not everybody's here, but they get to uh, meet and spend time with each other and celebrate um, that they graduate from the program. So so that's a major difference. Um, and I think program-wise, it's it's pretty similar. Uh, the amount of content, the amount of, you know, speakers and mentors that we have, it's just that uh, now it's, it's more like spread over all the weeks that we have. Before it was like jam packed in the first week, and then on the on the last week, and in between is is more like a catch up uh, thing, yeah. So you already run this program from two thousand and nineteen, right? So 18. 19, 18. Hmm. 18, 19, 20, 21, and twenty two, right? So already five years running this program. Yeah, we we kind of skipped the uh, twenty twenty four a really good reason, which I I can share later. Uh, so. The upcoming one would be the fifth edition. Ah, uh, I see. Mm. Um, we, we after four. running for time, um, mm. what's the uh, success story of the program? Like the most, like the amazing result of the program that you remember? Mm. Um, I think there are like different levels of success story. I would say, like, I wouldn't say one success is better than the other. We have had a lot of studios managed to uh, build their games to be better, uh, just increasing quality, increase in uh, uh, kind of like uh, growth in, in terms of like downloads and uh, retention and whatnot. So that is that is basic. Um, so a lot, of them, a lot of them actually managed to do it. So because of that, they monetize better too at the same time. And also because of that, they grow their team. So a lot of the people that I met like years after, it's like, they were three back then. Now they're like twenty. <laughs> so, to me, it's amazing because it's like it's, it's not easy to keep that many people, right? And yeah, then yeah, especially for a game studio. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? So it must mean that they 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 did something right, like you know, in in between uh, after the graduate until now. Um, so so that is something that I'm I'm super excited about. Um, so they managed to like grow their team. That's that's pretty common to see. Um, some of them managed to land publishing deals, like global pub publishing deals, uh, by launching their new game titles. Um, you know, after they graduate, uh, some of them collaborate with each other, which is kind of cool. So not just the peers collaborate with each other across region; they also collaborate with the mentors. Some of the mentors are publishers. Some of the mentors are kind of like, um, you know, like design experts, or you know, they're, they're probably like some other kind of expert. So they collaborate, which is kind of cool too. Um, I, I would consider that as a success because, you know, without the program, they wouldn't have known each other, right? And this is like, you know, the other side of the world kind of thing or the, you know, opposite side of the world. Um, and, you know, the more uh, prominent one would be uh, exit of a game. So uh, I think one alumni sold off their game for 150 million, which Wait, is... Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, whoa, like that is like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So they, yeah. And and to me, I think I think I I I I I would think that it's such an amazing uh, uh, kind of results when this person kind of reach out to us and say, like, hey, I did it, right? I did it because of you guys and I want to credit to you guys. And because of this, I want to come back to help. I think that uh... is the most important thing because this person understands that um, you know this is an ongoing thing, right? It's, it's a ever-growing ecosystem, and without each other, it wouldn't work. 
and 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 this person wants to come back and say, hey, you know, is there anything I can help? I want to be a mentor. I want to, you know, speak or just tell me what what I can do, right? And and he goes like, you know, now I, I don't have to worry about the money. I can just do things I like. So so it's amazing, right? Um, so that's this person, and then there's like a bunch of people uh, managed to raise Series A um, seed funding. So you know, there's a bunch of those too. Um, so yeah, I think. Uh, those are the, the 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 success cases that we've seen. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty uh, inspiring. Yeah, uh, and I also want to ask because, like, um, yeah, I'm so surprised like someone able to sell like Exeter Studio for that amount, uh, and I think that 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 should be a huge achievement uh, for them. But like, I'm also curious, as in, like, what is the common problem that you see? Uh, in mm. them when they enter because like that's like after right like after the graduation mm. so like what is usually the common problem yeah well just just one um one uh highlight is uh this this person didn't sell off the studio the studio still exists uh, oh okay they just, so they just sold off the game oh my gosh oh the, the, that's even game. better <laughs> yeah oh. just one game. <laughs> that's so surprising <laughs> <laughs> but the game was uh when they I mean, just elaborate a little bit more. When when they came to us, the game uh, was already performing like quite okay. It's just not to the level that they want, or you know, they they think it will be successful. So after they came in and learned a bunch of stuff, they keep on improving, and that's why I think uh, a year and a half later, they they hit the milestone that they want, which is like you know really bringing in a lot of revenue, and that's where they start like pitching it to uh, folks that would be interested in in the game. And then soon, I think about a year after that, then, you know, they got, the game got bought out. Mm. Yeah. So, which is yeah, pretty cool. That's, but, you know. It's <laughs> <that's> more surprising. <laughs> yeah. Because we're thinking uh, it's a whole studio. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty unique. Um, uh, but, you know, coming back to your question, uh, the challenges they face when they come into our, our programs or came to us, um, because they are small studios mostly, I think a lot of them are, typically folks who really love building games and they focus on building games. <laughs> so they miss out a lot of, um, you know, details or probably not so, uh, not so fluent in terms of uh, growth or monetization. Um, and a lot of them are hesitant even like, you know, to try out different, different ways of doing it. So for example, uh, there were, there were a lot of applicants before that we see, you know, come with come to us with uh, ad monetization as the only monetization method. So when we talk about that, it's like, okay, you know, this is great, uh, and but you know, if you want to scale further you know, or improve your revenue, you may want to consider like in-app purchases, for example. Like you need to change your game mechanics or like, you kind of design an economy into it, and you know, start doing the pricing and test things out and and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not something that they would be open to immediately. There's a lot of convincing, a lot of like, hey, you know, look at this uh, case study and this is how they did it or like this is the way you can do it. So, you know, there's a lot of like back and forth process before they actually try it. And, and of course, you know, if they have not made uh, enough money to cover their expenses and day-to-day -day thing, uh, it's very hard to convince them to even go that step. So the first thing is that, okay, does the monetization even work for them? You know, does it pay their bills, right? And if, if that doesn't pay their bills, so what's the actual problem? Is it design? Is it UI UX? Is it, is it the idea itself? Like, is it a good product, right? So there's a lot to think about. Uh, because these folks focus so much on building the product itself, it's sometimes, it's a, it's a really hard thing for the mentor to tell them, say, hey, this product doesn't work. <laughs> just, you know, just move on, just kill it, and then just move on to something else, right? Um, so, so it's also a challenge for us to uh, help them realize, you know, what they're in it for, right? So what kind of challenge they're facing. They will always come to us and say, hey, you know, I need to grow my revenue, always. But is that the actual challenge that they're facing, right? So mm -hmm. we, so our, our program, or at least like what we're trying to do is that we try to broaden their perspective of like, uh, you know, the journey they're, on, they're, they're actually on. Right now, it's not just revenue that they are short 
of, you know, it's also knowledge about managing a company, um, you know, growing revenues, retention and becoming a leader and, and, you know, just keep on trying and testing and, you know, analytics and reading data and whatnot. So, so we try to, you know, equip them with that. Uh, Marcus, right now, after four uh, IGA uh, enrolled, um, how many alumni do you have from the program? Hmm. Um, so each edition is about 30, 30, 60, 90. There's one edition that we have 36. So I think slightly, to, slightly more than 120. So those are the, yeah. So those are the alumni that's gone through uh, the Indie Games Accelerator. We also had a couple of what we call the boot camp, which is a shorter version. So we did a, oh. we did a, we did a boot camp in India and also in Brazil for Latin America. Uh, those I think each of that we probably have between fifteen to twenty. So if we add those, it'd be about one hundred and fifty. Mm. 150 yes yeah. um, what I like about this program is like not only you care about them while they are uh, in the program but after mm. the program you still try to engage with them you still try to um, gather them like at GDC at Gamescom so what's the purpose of this like meetup of networking hmm it's uh, it's 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 quite interesting because you know we're also observing them and and learning from them. It's it's not just like you know what we think is the best. So after the first edition, we were uh, we were actually observing these folks and and try to see like you know what do they care about. And after the first edition and the second edition, the alumni actually came together and start building their own community and stay in touch. Not just that they stay in touch, the mentors also stay in touch. And some of the mentors not just stay in touch with each other, but they also stay in touch with the studio. So because of that learning, we realized that, hey, you know, maybe there's something with the community that we can do, right? Maybe we should build a network and then, you know, actively maintain the network just for this process to continue to, you know, really... Uh, make it sustainable. Really push the you know the, the ecosystem forward by by building momentum. So, so that's why uh, we try to give back uh, to first to the mentors who has been you know really nice to us and you know help with volunteering their time and you know really mentoring the studios because without them um, you know there's there's nothing much we can do right. So so they, they are the heroes be, without the cape. So we want to make sure that uh, we can add values to uh, to these people. So so that was that was when you know we started to think that hey you know maybe we should we should hang out right. So we should hang out where everybody is. Like when we go to GDC, let's have a meetup uh, or or Gamescom, let's have a meetup. And because these meetups are in person, we also open to alumni who might want to you know come and say hi or you know learn new things and meet new new people as well. So so that was the idea. And, and that was also the reason why we start with Indie Games Group as well. Because they, uh, after, after observing them, I think there's a lot of value for them to stay in touch and then grow. Um, so, so that's also you know, the reason why we start the community program. Yeah, I think like, um, we, we also need to, re I think this is my realization as well that um, like community is power force. Uh, like, for example, you uh, learn something from someone. It, it can be in that short, but like the the most important thing is what comes after stuff mm. like that. So, like, uh, following your um, explanation, like, is me like project or like uh, that the alumni make from like after like the event that is coming from the indie games group. Sorry, Kiki, I, I, I think I didn't hear the question. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, the connection my... is not too good. Yeah. Um, yeah, so in short, my question is like, uh, like is there any like project in, uh, birth out of the indie game? 
project that is birthed out of the indie games? Is that the question? Well, yes, after the indie games accelerator, it's like basically from the alumni group that you mm. explained like mm. before. Yeah, what like is there any anything that? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Sorry. Um, to be honest, I don't know because <laughs> uh, I I know that some of them are actively working with each other, like collaborating on the projects and stuff. But I don't know if they've released anything, uh, you know, uh, as like a game title or anything like that. I know some of the alumni um, kind of uh, provide work for hire service to some of our mentors. Uh, yeah. Mm. So, you know, those would be, uh, uh, you know, working for another company and producing the titles and things like that, which, you know, uh, that one I, I, I know uh, for sure it happened. Uh, just that I don't know which title. Uh, so yeah, uh, some work has been done collaboratively, uh, but I would, within and between the alumni, I, I don't really know <laughs> if they publish anything. I see, I see. And oh. I think it's a good bridging too to the thing that you mentioned about indie game groups. So mm. would you mind sharing a little bit about what is indie game groups? Yeah, uh, don't mind at all. So Indie Games Group is uh, our, you know, kind of like the spin of idea from observing these alumni and how they interact with each other. Mm -hmm. So um, after 2019, these folks uh, that was from the class, they were like, hey, you know, we love each other. <laughs> Can we just stay in touch? <laughs> so, so, so they went on to Discord and, and started a, a Discord server. And, you know, a bunch of them were like, oh, you know, let's just keep talking. And, and they really like that, that environment so much that they want to push, keep on pushing each other, keep on sharing, keep on like, you know, discussing about uh, build, building games and whatnot. So, so they actually went on doing it. And then they invited me into the Discord. So I was like, mm -hmm. this is such a cool idea because, um, you know, obviously there are uh, different ways of doing it. And, and they were doing it like, okay, it's just all the alumni, right? So uh, it, it gave us, you know, a, a really good idea as, as um, uh, to to begin with. So we start drafting, um, you know, the 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 indie games group program, uh, mm -hmm. and then get support from stakeholders. And then actually we piloted it in uh, in Indonesia. <clears throat> uh, so good this is <laughs> <laughs> so Indonesia is is, is our uh, first community, and it has been solid and strong ever since <clears throat> so this is a volunteer-led uh virtual community well virtual uh mainly community uh for game developers or you know people who's in the gaming industry who likes to learn from each other so it's more like a peer-to-peer -peer learning platform mm -hmm. uh that is led by volunteer um and supported by google right so so it's a is is basically just a uh, think of it this way, like if I am new, uh, I want to learn about building games. Usually I don't know where to go, right? I don't know who to talk to. I need mentors, but I don't know if anyone is willing to give me their time, right? So I need to go somewhere. So we want to be there for them. Yeah, we want to be the community for them. And we want to make the, the uh, entry barrier as low as possible. So they can come in, everybody can say hi, and then, you know, just take them in. And then help them in their journey. So that's that's what we want to achieve. Other than Discord group and have a channel and people chat with each other, mm -hmm. uh, what are the things that usually uh, indie game groups do? Um, so one thing we recognize is that um, indie game studios usually uh, you know look at uh, all platforms or all technologies and. And you know all kinds of different like questions to help them you know build better games, so they usually talk about uh, how to run a, bit, a game studio, uh, talk about you know the the successes and failures, um, talk about you know um, this versus that, you know, either technologies or platform you know or anything like that, or uh, what's the latest trend insights. Uh, sometimes because it's supported by Google, we also, you know, provided some content. Um, so recently we are running, 
uh, this thing called Google Play Academy Study Jam. So uh, we're taking you know some content off of the Play Academy platform, uh, which is self learning platform, and then we make it into an um, instructor led uh, classroom environment. So you come and join. There will be an instructor kind of lead you through all this content, and you can ask questions. You can join with your friends if you want to, and then you can discuss. You know, uh, there's like working group and whatnot. So there's things like that. Uh, there's a game jam. Uh, I think Indonesian team is pretty good at like running this kind of stuff. Um, they have uh, they, they recently they are also like pretty active with uh, game seat as well. Um, and what else do they do? They do a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so many. I, a lot of I, stuff. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. I don't even remember <laughs> all of them. They do so much things. Yeah. And until yeah. now, how many IGG uh, already established uh, hmm. globally? So we started uh, with Indonesia, I think, March last year. Uh, we've just onboarded the sixth uh, IGG in Europe. Um, so they just kicked off last week. Europe, a whole yes. uh, continent? Yeah, um, yeah uh, the whole region, yes. Uh, we initially wanted to um, kind of pick a country and then go in, uh, but everybody seems to be sharing the same sentiment whereby within the country itself, the community is not big enough. So, uh, so we hear that from different countries and they were like, you know, what if we just join together? I thought it was a good idea because um, everybody seems to be okay with communicating in English. Uh, they seem to be okay with each other. So, so we pulled together uh, several folks, uh, some of them IG alumni, some of them, you know, folks that we met uh, along the way. So, So we'll pull together uh, a few of them and then, and then you know, just just kick it off. So we have representation from four countries, I think, right now, and we hope to you know add more people as we go. Yeah, that that was great to hear. Like, you know, if if I'm in a position of I want to you know start making my own game, like uh, <laughs> it's it's great to know that there's this type of community like to go to. Yeah. And and you know it's also learning from my own experience as well. I I, I wasn't ex exposed to these kind of things, right? Mm -hmm. And when people when people came to me and said, "Hey, you know, you should join like you know some kind of group to help you grow," and I thought that growing process is accelerated for sure because you're in an environment where everybody's like pushing each other and like you know you should do better, you can do this, you can try that, and you will feel like okay, I'm empowered. I should do it, right? And then you keep on pushing yourself as well. So if I look back, I think uh, I myself grow a lot when I was doing all those all those stuff in the community. And I think people would hopefully feel the same way, you know, when they're empowered in the same, uh, the same kind of environment. Mm. Um, last question for me, I guess before we're going to Adam again. Because um, yeah. like, our, we're hoping this kind of um, community and like, an opportunity for, you know, more like game studio are more confident, you know, to make their own games, um, being successful. So what is kind of like your, um, how to say, like vision, like long-term mm -hmm. vision from you personally um, to see like the indie game studio grow, uh, especially I think in um, not only globally, but also in, in Southeast Asia uh, as, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I I hope I think my vision is that I hope um, anyone who is thinking of coming into the game industry, especially mobile game industry, can you know first think about indie games group. You know that's the reason why we built this kind of community because we want to be the platform for folks who want to learn and who wants to build their network, and and therefore you know it has to be the strongest, the largest uh, in the region, if not in the world. Uh, that's the vision. So, so that's what we're heading in terms of where the program is. But of course, uh, if you take a step back and try to look at all the stuff that we do, what we really try to do is that we want to build like a, a series of programs that kind of connect with each other. So what we really hope to see is that someone came from a community uh, and then they try to build game, and they receive help, build good game, grow, become successful, or kind of successful, they still need help. They join the Indie Games Accelerator, get accelerated, and becomes you know even better. 
and then they you know do something else and then they kind of you know become like super big or anything like that and they come back and become mentor that is the perfect and the most ideal sustainable ecosystem we're trying to uh, build and then just kind of keep on going right so you know to the point that with or without us uh that thing can still go on like without even you know someday in the future without any case starter or we then even without like some of the programs that we do people will start to do things like that because they see success that's what we hope to do that's nice yeah. that's amazing it's <laughs> it's nice to right i mean like yes you don't need to keep like feeding them with content feeding them with support is it's already like running it can mm. grow scale uh, scale on itself Yeah, mm -hmm. it it does take time, and it does take um, it does take a lot of stakeholder coming together, understanding the vision, and want to be a part of it. And you know, there's a lot of convincing, a lot of negotiation, a lot of like, hey, you know, let's collaborate. Uh, it's not like it's something that we can pull off like within like a few years. It it has to be like longer than that. Right, right. Um, Marcus, I have uh, mm. another topic that I want to get your insight because sure. Indie Game Accelerator is a global program, right? It's from mm -hmm. all over the world. It's from the participant and the mentors come from US, from Brazil, from South Korea, from every countries, and now mm -hmm. you're also building IGG around the world. Uh, I mean, uh, I can say that you are the best person to have like helicopter eye regarding the indie ecosystem around the world, right? Um, mm. From your perspective, uh, how's the landscape? Is there any continent that is more mature? And what do you think Indonesia right now on the on the map? Hmm, that's a good question. I think if we were to take an aerial view about um, you know ecosystem per and and compared to the other ecosystem in other countries, I think um, there's definitely strength and um, you know places to improve. Or gaps. Uh, the strength that Indonesia ecosystem has is that uh, you folks have a lot of creative people, really, really cool uh, designers, artists, um, and uh, some folks will also be able to like build pretty good games as well. I think uh, Indonesia ecosystem is at the point where um, you know the first batch of uh, successful indie studios is going to graduate, and then. Will come back and then you know build more, which is the second wave. I think that is a really interesting thing to see and observe. Uh, in other countries that I work with, uh, region especially in the emerging markets, I think they are going through the same cycle. So they, they some of them probably already have like the probably the first exits or you know the fi first big indie studios that got bought over by other AAA studios or whatever, and then you know they they keep on coming back and investing in the same market. So. They probably already done the first round, and they're building the second round. So we're starting to see a lot more like small ones popping up, and you know they used to work with AAA studios. Now they're building their own, own companies, and and you know so on and so forth. So I think they are moving into that same direction as well. Uh, so I wouldn't say you know uh, one is better than the other. It's just the matter of time, right? Uh, but the strength that Indonesia ecosystem has is that you know I think creative talents. Uh, It's pretty pretty interesting, uh, and I've seen uh, you know really good ones. Um, compared to uh, let's say uh, more uh, mature market, I think uh, the quality of the games is is probably you know uh, a gap in terms of amount, uh, not like you know not like one or two. It's just you know just talking about the volume. Mm -hmm. I think some markets would have more quality games, uh, original games, uh, uh, than the others. I think Indonesia uh, has a lot of very interesting uh, ideas. Some of them is very specific to local context, um, so which is kind of interesting. Uh, I would hope to see more, you know, uh, titles that is a little bit more internationalized or a little bit more. Uh, Uh, on targeting the export market, I think that will be something interesting to see. I think maybe collaboration or between the region might be able to help. I don't know. I mean, I'm just speaking off the top of my head. Mm. Um, 
the other uh, similarities that is interesting that I found out is that no matter what market we're looking at, uh, the challenges usually are the same for the small uh, developer studio, development studios. Uh, they always talk about the same thing, no matter if we're talking about Europe, Latin America, or even like, you know, places like US, Japan, Korea, they are, they're always talking about the same thing. So because they go through the same process, right? Like, you know, it's also the same journey. So they always talk about the same. Uh, I just want to build games. <laughs> but then they don't know how to grow it. They don't know how to monetize it better, uh, so on and so forth. So it's it's pretty interesting to to know that. And, you know, as much as we want to, we would love to, you know, help them ease into the topic with the with the stuff that we have. And, and hopefully they become better. Uh, and learn this easier as well. In, interesting. Um, you mentioned about it's not about the one region is better. It's just about the time, right? Mm -hmm. Your rough calculation, Marcus, within the gap <laughs> between the the most mature region with a lot of um, uh, huge scale games uh, out there with Indonesia, how far behind is Indonesia in time period? I mean, like, five years, ten years? It's, a, it's years? a tough question, Adam. You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, uh, let's just put it this way. I think I think uh, it's very close to uh, Indonesia. You, you guys are very close to graduating the first layer of indie studios to become big. Yeah, so... And yeah, I and think, usually I think, after mm. one studio's crack the egg uh, mm. of success, everyone will uh, coming up to right usually. Sure. Yeah, that's that's what we have been. So some of the IG alumni actually came from the the more uh, established and bigger studios in Indonesia, and when we talked to them. They were like, oh, you know, uh, I know this person because we used to work together in this studio. It's like, okay, you guys are from the same place. And and that's that's a good sign because, you know, then these, go, they, these folks will start to build their own studios. And then when they grow bigger, they will train the next generation that comes out and, you know, start their own studios and whatnot. Although it may not, like, if you're a founder, you may not want to see this ever because you don't want your talent to go out and, you know, leave you because after you spend so much time and energy training them, but it's bound to happen, and then it's it's a good sign, right? Uh, and I think uh, in terms of like talents coming from this big, more uh, established studios, it already happened. I think we just need to see more like successes that inspire more people to come into to the game industry. I think uh, you're not too far from that to see like the the big break, the first layer, like boom, everybody's like you know super successful and all that. I think we're very close to that. Uh, you know, having said that, um, you know, they, they are already like very successful studios in Indonesia um, already. Which I'm just saying that, you know, you need that that uh, kind of momentum to kind of push with one, one, one layer higher. Yes, we need to have like you mentioned, uh, sell mm. the game for $150 <laughs> million <dollars>. <laughs> <laughs> for everyone to look up and, hey, I can do that too. And let's <laughs> Yeah, a few years ago, everybody would be like, I want to be Flappy Bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Marcus, you mentioned about um, new talents coming into the uh, game industry, right? Mm -hmm. So is the... Uh, when we're talking about the ecosystem in the game industry, like if you want to make games, you need talents, you need funding, you need mm -hmm. access to market. Mm -hmm. And the one that um, the letter to like the the funding, it is something mm -hmm. that I know if we do things right, we can mm -hmm. get access to funding. Mm -hmm. And regarding the access to market, if you have the 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 capital, you can do that. And of course, Google can help you with that. But the mm -hmm. thing that cannot uh, we we can do instantly is creating the talent. Right? If mm -hmm. we train the talent today, maybe we can see the result in the next two or three years or five years. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the um the role of like i don't know universities or like education to mm. prepare the talent for the next game developers are there um needs a specific curriculum or like a specific mindset or like should we as an industry work with them closely what do you think 
you 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 i think you hit on uh your, your own point with that um so when we so i've learned this from you know uh vc uh, some years ago for an ecosystem to be established and also to to have the momentum to move forward uh there are a few stakeholders Uni universities and is, uh, learning institutions definitely one of them and then we have angels, we have VCs, uh, which you mentioned, uh, either VC or uh, family offices. You know, those will be interesting too. Uh, government associations and also, you know, um, folks like us, which is, you know, corporate companies. So all these have, uh, all of us have a role to play in this, in making this happen. And, you know, when we come together and then we sit down and say, hey, you know, this is the way to move forward. And then we agreed on, on playing our role this will definitely move forward. So coming back to your questions about universities, I think uh, if universities see the same vision, you know, knowing that in the, this industry <clears throat> is something uh, that is promising, it is not like, you know, back in those days, I don't know if you have to go through that. My mom used to say like playing games is a waste of time. <laughs> I think no. we, we still, are, it's still are. actually <laughs> yeah it's still until now yeah, until yeah. Now. now now I kind of play games for my work but <laughs> but uh but you know uh if if universities uh do have uh the same mindset as us and you know want to invest more in this I think mm. you know not just having a uh, good curriculum or like programs uh you know they should also invest a little bit more in terms of like getting the right folks to come in to, you know, uh, to give talks or like partner with industry to, you know, for, for internship or, you know, things like that. I think that would be cool to see. Um, and uh, also this goes back to, you know, the other stakeholders in the, in the ecosystem, you know, is there a way to collaborate, right? So association is one part. And what if, uh, what if they collaborate with uh, bigger studios or publishers or uh, private, other private companies, you know, can we place them? Can we, can we, you know, kind of do a projects together or something like that? So, so there's like a lot of ways to do it. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of actors that needs to come together uh, to make this work. And is that part of a job, Marcus, to connect <laughs> every one of them? <laughs> I'm, well, uh, I'm here talking to you, so <laughs> this I'm, is I'm trying my best. One of the part, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm trying my best. Uh, and then also, you know, I'm just one guy, right? So I don't know how much I can do, but uh, I've been trying to learn more as, as we go and try to see, you know, what else can we, we can do either together or separately, you know, how do we encourage the others to do the same? Uh, how do we inspire more people to, to be a part of this? So it's a, I'd say it's an ongoing thing. Um, it's not like something that we have answered tomorrow or like something that we can change next year. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it's a it's an exciting journey, nonetheless. Yes, sounds fun. Yeah, be able to help a lot of people. Yeah, Kiki, you still have another question. If not, um, I think we almost out of time. No, no, I have I have last question. Just just no, answer it ahead, shortly. Shoot. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, just uh, if if I want to make a game like tomorrow <laughs> like if, if i from this podcast from watching this podcast i am so inspired to start my own game studio right <laughs> like starting from zero like what, what should be my uh first step yeah well first they have to be a part of agi <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and then and then of course you know join uh game dev community any kind really. Uh, of course, I would like them to join uh, IGGI, the Indie Games Group Indonesia, but there are so many other, uh, you know, communities that is great. Either they focus on specific platforms or technology or game engine, it doesn't matter. They have to be out there first. So one thing, uh, I mean, if I were to, you know, uh, give one advice to folks who's starting off is to never ever think that you're alone in this. You are not. Like you're, you're, you're definitely not alone. And don't ever think that you're alone. And you know, try to like have tunnel vision and sit at your home and you know try to code and and try to make something happen. You know, don't do that. Just go out, talk to people, right? And then you know, build as you go. Um, so you know, I think that's the best way to 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 start. 
Yes, and yeah. there's a lot of programs at um, IGGI, the Indie Game Groups Indonesia, that can help you with that. I remember they have a like one-on-one -on -one mentoring session for you uh, who wants to um, know more about how uh, is the game industry, and they have a game jam session for you who doesn't have a team to find mm. partners, and they have a lot of things going on. So. Please yeah, go to this link. <laughs> <laughs> you can just Double on, subscribe as well. go to that link and join the group. I think it's a uh, very, very. The, you you mentioned earlier at Google the thing that you uh, like is that everyone's very open, want to share, and very warm. I think that's also embodied into the IGGI too. So uh, for everyone who listening to this podcast or watching it on YouTube and want mm. to start, I think. IGGI would would be one of the best starting point. Hmm. You mentioned something really interesting that got me thinking. I want to also add one strength to Indonesia game ecosystem is that folks that I meet has been helpful, friendly, open, willing to share. Uh, it is not the same in some of the ecosystem, but Indonesia definitely has this kind of um, vibe, which is pretty cool. You know, it's Gotong Royong. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I do understand. <laughs> nice. All right. So uh, I think we almost run out of the time. Thank you so much, Marcus, uh, for being You're here and sharing your stories. Yeah. Thank you for all the insight and the tips and advice. And I think the last question from Kiki will resonate with a lot of our listeners uh, who want to start their. Uh, either making their games or creating their studio and remember what Marcus said that we have uh, you're not alone we have mm -hmm. all of the helps the tools that you can use from the IGGI the Indie Game Accelerator and all the other program from the IGI and everyone here mm -hmm. we are willing to help you so don't be scared yeah. thank you so much Marcus you. Kiki have a nice day everyone bye bye thank you Adam thank you Kiki bye Thank <music> you.